Greetings and welcome to another excellent World of Tanks video. What you see here is the awesome prize card that I got from the Gladiators blue card package that I bought. This tank was a 10,700 gold refund to my account. And so I decided that since my investment into this tank of about 1500 gold during the last tanks for free experience netted me a profit of over 9000 gold cork would be very proud of me um, I figured I'm going to go ahead and set this tank up and see what it will do so I'm going to do that for you here I hadn't intended on doing this but I figured you know after you score you better show the people what you have you know so please leave a like for this video it'll help spread the word if you haven't subscribed the best thing you could do to help me would be to subscribe and you'll get more videos like this and also the other video that I posted showing you how I got this awesome tank tell your friends they might be interested as well now we're gonna get down to some business so let's get in here and check out this dude now first thing I always like to do is look at this gun accuracy 0.29 geez I consider 0 0.30 to be sniper minimum it's already better than that that's fantastic if you don't know and if you're a newer player the number on the right accuracy at 100 meters 0.29 the lower that number is the better the accuracy will be essentially I put it this way if you aim this gun at a target at 100 meters away it the bullet could deviate up to 0.29 meters which would be uh, 29 centimeters which would be like 10 inches off target which in the size of a tank that's really not bad because if you're 10 inches off of where you think you're aiming on a tank that's still a hit okay so just giving you some kind of context in case you don't know that all right the first thing I always do I get rid of enhanced targeting it's worthless why is it worthless well when you get rid of it they give you nothing for it and I'm going to replace that guaranteed with enhanced optics this is going to jack up the vision range now we don't have a commander yet at either we'll save the commander for last because the commander is going to change the vision and the reload and the accuracy all at the same time so just giving you the heads up there so what now I had already put in my standard consumables gold repair I usually use exclusively on frontline guys but you know this one has a large silver bonus you go look in the bottom left hand corner it has a 50% silver bonus so I'm going to invest the 10,000 to give extra repairs because if you're stuck at the end of the match and you're one of the last guys in this tank you're gonna wish you had extra repairs but you could go my normal outlay would be just a white repair just because you're probably not gonna need more than one as a as a sniper tank but you never know so I'm gonna go extra cautious with the gold repair normally I use gold repairs on frontline guys mediums heavies and scout light tanks so here what we want to do for sure of course advanced loader what's the reload on this guy let's look I forgot 11.03 that's terrible so we're gonna go advanced loader knock 10% off of that that'll make it under 10 seconds reload is now 9.92 fantastic well it's not fantastic yet but that's it's in head in the right direction now another thing we can do is 
add a fan to it. Increased ventilation will increase the reload, well, decrease the reload time as well it was, as it will increase the accuracy. So this is to me is a no-brainer. You want to have your snipers with the fastest reload and the best accuracy you can get. So now let's go and check what our reload, I mean, what our accuracy is. Accuracy is down to 0.28, which is very good. I'm actually, actually quite excellent. Reload is now down again, 9.72. So that knocked off two tenths of one second. Not bad. Now I already have enhanced rations, which increases accuracy and decreases reload time. So that was there from the get-go. That was already being factored in. Now, essentially what we have is room for one item. I could go with speed, but this thing's already pretty fast. Camo net is looking pretty good. It's got a 294 concealment. Let's go with the camo net and see what this is going to get us. And that knocks it down to 235. That's tremendous. Now we're going to pull up a Frenchie commander. So let's go in here. Commander. Okay, Frenchie. Let's, whoops, my guy is set here for American. Frenchie. So we have a killer. What the heck? There we go. That is a sniper commander. That one's also sniper. But this one's got the, this has the repair perks. This is good for other things as well. She is going to be perfect. Double check this. I think I only have two really good ones. That's artillery. So we're going to go with her. All right. Now, born leader effects reload and accuracy so we're going to get a triple effect on our accuracy our reload and also on our vision because all three of those are affected by born leader so it affects the vision which is in the tank and then these two which are on the commander and in the tank so just giving you the heads up there this is also vision affecting it's going to make a big difference. We were at, I think, at 14, I think 413. Camouflage experience here is useful. 10% camo. We were at, what, 235? It'll be much less than that. So let's go look and see what we got. Cha-ching. As you can see, our camo now is 216. The next skill I would put on my commander here would be the foliage green thumb you'll get another 10 percent camouflage effect if you're in bushes so our gun accuracy is going to go from 0.28 to 0.24 which is fairly nasty and our reload time was 9.72 it is now down to 8.18 so we knocked over a second and a half off of that by adding a highly skilled commander and i like to remind people when you're using top level this is a tier eight sniper tank you want to use some top level commanders you don't want to put a two skill commander in here because you're just throwing attributes away if you have a higher commander so you don't want to put a two or three skill you could live with three skills if it was the three that I have at the very top, which is the rapid reload, the steady aim, and the born leader, but you're not going to get any camo bonus, etc., etc. You're not going to get any vision bonus. Now, the vision is up to 471. So, this tank has a big vision range advantage over its concealment. So, if you're camouflaged, they're going to have to get 216 away from you to see you. 
but you can see them at 471 on open ground. So that's the key. That, that's the key difference there. So this is set up really good. And I'm thinking probably should up the thing. Also, when you always set up a tank, always make sure you switch your premium rounds from gold to silver. I'm thinking, yeah, let's go 16. That's probably reasonable. All right. So now this dude is good, and I mean good to go. Uh, actually, I'm going to add camo to this. So let's go add camo and see what we got. Yeah, you got Frenchy emblems. I'll tell you what's always good. It looks better. I don't like that little circular Frenchy. It's kind of bogus. Flags. There we go. Hmm. Oh, five vouchers. Yeah, these aren't expensive, really. 96,000. I make that in one match of Cold War. So you can see here. It looks better than that so you only have to pay for it once and then you can reuse the same emblem you already put on there you pay for it once use it multiple you know times in this case too so there it is Frenchy flag yeah that looks cool inscription what kind of Frenchy inscription do we have All right. So take a look. Hey, Team Ragnarok. That was cool. Dun, 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 dun. The Fort de France is pretty good. Let's go look and see. They have another one, Viva La France, which is a good one. Ah, France first. That's okay. Can't argue with that. Well, that wasn't really that great of a selection. So... We'll go with Fort de France. Good enough. Go with currency, no big deal. Okay, so that's fantastic. Now, what do we have winter wise? Dun, 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 dun. Oh, oh, that's not bad. I don't want it to wreck. Can't read my thing there, so. What about not transparent? Winter white is okay. That might be awesome. This looks actually really good. Eh, I don't like to put expensive camos there. What's going to go good with this camo net? That's not bad. Historical Korea is a good one. Some of these are good. Nah, I don't like this reddish business. Ugh, those are hideous. That's not bad. Ertl's a little subdued. Well, Cracked is, is a good one. I'll just go with Cracked. Whatever. So, desert, what do we have here? Not bad. I like the more tan-oriented deserts. That's me, so I'm going to go with this one. Urban. This is pretty good. I don't like those weirdos at all. That's okay. 
This has a little more organic look to it. What about this guy? Let's look at this. That's not bad. Kind of simulates building stuff. I don't like digitals on World War II because it's not from the era. I'm going to go with the organic, you know, uneven lines. All right. Now, what I'm going to do, I'm going to go take this to battle. What the heck? So, I will see you in several minutes or longer. You'll see me in mere seconds. Okay. I have returned from my battles. The thing is that half of those battles were won, half were lost. Four out of six matches were tier 10 matches. Let's just say this thing is not very good against tier 10s, but that's not a shocker. In fact, it's one of the reasons I don't really play tier 8 matches. Because it's too many tier 10 matches where you're just completely outgunned and the matches are absolutely unfair to every tier 8 in the match. But when you're stuck there doing this, you just do it. And that's the thing. I didn't have anything I could show you that was really great. I mean, I had one match that was pretty good. I guess I'll show you that one, but let me show you the results of all the matches. All right, everything above the orange line is the Audace. And I'll go through these with you briefly, and then I'll show you one that was the best, you know, game, I guess. Um, cliff match, tier 10. It was ridiculous. No damage from any of my shots. So, not fun. Westfield. I mean, I penetrated two shots. We got a win. Okay, whatever. Mines. Very little damage that I did. Um, ended up winning that match, so that was fine. The Swamp match is probably the best match that I can show you here. Um, I am going to do a specific video on the Prokhorovka map. And it's much longer. It's a much longer game, so it's not good to do here. It'll just make this way too long. The Swamp map was pretty good. So that's probably the best uh, match of a reasonable length. Fisherman's Bay was another Tier 10 match. And my team was just absolute flaming garbage. They did nothing. You don't want to see it because it's a waste. I wouldn't waste your time showing you that. I don't even know why some of those guys ever played the game. That's how bad they were. But whatever. And then I had Prokhorovka. This one is worthy of a video on its own game of the day quality. But it's very long. It's over 13 minutes. So it's just not good to do it with this one. So we're going to do the swamp, and I'll set this up for just a second. Welcome to the swamp. Now this match lasts less than eight minutes, but it's pretty good. <clears throat> this tank has good movement. Semi-fast. It's like a 50-ish, 55, whatever, um, without any extra adjustments. Because clearly you saw I didn't put any tracks or anything else on there. Didn't have, didn't have trouble with the crew. I could put gasoline for extra speed, I suppose, which would have made a little bit of help. But... Our team was good in this match. That light tank down there is a real pain. 
it's unfortunate that my tier 10 American light tank Sheridan is not as good as that German one because that actually behaves more like a classical light tank in the hands of someone like myself it's a monster or it would be but I'm not running through you know that long thing just to get that one tank that's crazy I really can't shoot at anything over there by the castle. But I'm just hiding. Because as a tier 8 and a tier 10 match, you really need the guys to thin down before you can make a real contribution. So I'm just trying to, you know, possibly get shots. It didn't work out, but I was undamaged when I finally did get shots. You know, my team is starting off strong. Three kills, can't go wrong there. They were really on those guys at the castle, as you can see, early. Well, this tank fires very accurately, which the numbers would suggest. So, just waiting to see what happens here. We have, what, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, basically seven or eight guys in the vicinity. So, I'm moving up to try and get a decent position because there's got to be somebody else that's going to be showing up. There's just no way these guys are going to smash the group from my team over there. We have too many guys against them. Now they have three heavies there. And we have two heavies, three heavies, a medium, another tank destroyer, and a light tank. So <clears throat> we have the complete numerical superiority. And now, it's even worse for them. They have that one heavy tank with a backup guy coming. That dude, I drilled him. I didn't get the reload in time to shoot him. There it is. I hit him, someone else killed him, so it was all good. <clears throat> I drill him, you kill him. A tank destroyer, Ferdinand, he's going to be annihilated. Tagged him. <laughs> he's gone. <laughs> Another one bites the dust. Now I noticed that they were trying to overrun our base. And so I sent a message here to warn them. Now that fact, that's my first message, the one you saw. I headed back to defend the base to give the guys from the castle a chance to get there. Hit that guy. Twice and then I'm going to get killed here. <clears throat> I didn't expect to meet that medium there. I was hoping to get back to the base, but that didn't quite happen. But my team is good. And so, they're going to stop this easily. I scored good damage in this match. 
I mean, there's nothing wrong with this tank. It's just the matchups that you get. You know, when you get four out of six games in tier 10s, it's, it's not cool. It makes you not want to play it at all. go and see what we have here not this guy stone cold very good there you go No shot. <clears throat> if you've never seen one of these Centurion AVREs, they're pretty darn good. That was from the Valiant Season Ultimate Pass. I have one, and it's a good tank. This guy's in trouble, trust me. And I mean, the enemy, not not our guy. The Centurion, I knew that guy finishes MVP. He was fantastic. And Undead Army is a really good name, too. So, terrific job. So, here is the end of game screen. Like I said, pretty good match overall. 1,500 damage. Can't complain. Got a win. You know, it wasn't spectacular. I didn't have any matches that were spectacular for a sniper tank. But I'm making a separate video on Prokhorovka. That one was an awesome game. And you should check it out because it's, it's, it's not what you're going to expect. Probably, but then again, you might. So, hopefully, you enjoyed this. Um, the tank is really great. It's just that realistically, you can't play these kind of tanks unless you're in a platoon with guys who know what they're doing. You know, I'm by myself, and so I w I got 50% victories, but it was just tier 10 nastiness, and which is just very uncool. But that's, you know, the way it goes. So, you know, I wouldn't recommend anyone buy it. But if you get one, it's good. It's, it's a real good tank. Just, you know, stay out of tier 10 matches if you can. But there's nothing you could do. So, hopefully you enjoyed watching this video to see this stuff. Please leave a like. If you haven't subscribed, please consider subscribing. It'll help you get notifications for these videos. That I do every day. Tell your friends. Maybe they'll be interested. Maybe they'll subscribe. So thanks for watching. I'll see you guys in the next one. Check out the Prokhorovka map. I'm telling you it's a good, it's a good game. But it's long. <laughs>